Hey guys, Frank Spencer here, Mr. Chatsworth, and it's a nice rainy day here in, in Southern California, so I thought this would be a good time for us to take a look back at 2023 and look at some of the numbers and and uh, see if we can glean from the information that I'm about to give where we think the market's going to go in 2024 where the opportunities will be and and so on. So uh, with that, let's dive into it. Uh, by all accounts, if you're in the real estate industry, uh, a lender, uh, title rep, uh, insurance carrier, you name it, uh, 2023 real estate agent, 2023 was a, was a pretty challenging year. Um, we saw... Um, sales numbers that we haven't seen probably since uh, 1988. Um, and uh, to be truthful, we expect it to be much worse. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that now. Um, but first, a few numbers for you to understand. Uh, uh, if we take a look at where December uh, 2023 was for the month, here in Southern California, the six counties that, that make up the greater Southern California area, uh, about 12,012 homes sold uh, during that month. Again, that's the lowest number of homes sold uh, in uh, in the month of December, going all the way back to 1988 when CoreLogic, where I got this data from, first started tracking those numbers. Now, remember, that takes into account um, the big crash in 2007, 2008. Remember that? The world ended. You couldn't sell a home. And yet we sold fewer homes in Southern California and statewide. We'll talk about that as well. Um, fewer homes this past year than were sold even in, in what we thought were truly historically difficult times for, for the home industry, for the home buyer and home seller. Um, uh, across Southern California, um, we saw 163,000 homes sold for the year. Um, that was, uh, as, as I said, fewer than 2007, 2008. And the reason for it, hmm, think about it, slower demand. What would impact demand? Interest rates? Yeah, good guess. Um, so interest rates uh, brought down demand, but something else happened. Inventories went down. Why'd they go down? Sellers felt trapped. Um, here they had these interest rates in the twos, in the threes, in the fours. And all of a sudden, interest rates rose so quickly and were up in the, in the sixes, sevens, and eights for a while. And sellers were were thinking, God, can I can I trade this two and two point interest rate and move to a six, seven, or eight? Economically, does it make sense? And sellers didn't come into the market um, as they typically would, even for life changing events, getting older, inability to navigate stairs, so on, so forth. Those things that generally um, bring a seller to market, didn't do so. So because we had that, that uh, uh, conflicting metric going against each other, uh, buyer, buyer apathy to some degree and seller apathy to some degree, prices didn't fall. They were projected to. Statewide CAR thought that uh, we'd see 10% reduction in uh, in uh, uh, values over the course of the year. That didn't happen. They also thought that we'd have about a 7%, and this is key, reduction in the number of homes sold. They figured statewide we'd sell about 330,000 homes. That didn't happen either. What, what ended up happening statewide uh, is that roughly uh, 258,000 homes sold, not the 330 that they projected. 
instead of a 7% drop in the amount of homes sold, that number ended up being uh, closer to 25% um, in terms of whole homes sold. So because there were fewer home sales on the buyer side because uh, fear of interest rates and monthly payments and and so on. Typically, that would drive down prices to bring buyers back into the market, the law of supply and demand. But when inventory dropped to levels we haven't seen in 36 years and uh, and sellers just didn't come to market, instead of that 10% drop in value, which for median home, median sale price in, in uh, Southern California right now is roughly about 700, 720,000. Uh, so that represents $72,000 reduction in value, give or take a dollar. Um, instead of seeing that, prices for the most part stayed firm. And uh, when I say they stay firm, there was a slight uh, value drop, less than 1%, about half of 1% uh, in, in value drop. So uh, statistically, that means prices didn't change at all. And, and again, that that is how law of supply and demand uh, works. Demand dropped, but supply dropped even lower. Um, all of this... All of this was predicated, as I said, because interest rates rose. Uh, we went from uh, 3% loans to 8% loans and buyers fell out of the market. What was interesting uh, and nobody predicted was how quick the values rebounded. We're very near where the prices were at the peak uh, values uh, uh, post pandemic. Remember that in March 2020, we're all locked in our homes. We couldn't sell them. Realtors couldn't come in and sign contracts. We all had to wear masks, and we all had to uh, conduct business by Zoom. And and initially, prices just fell, and then interest rates rose. Uh, two years later. And uh, prices fell, uh, were expected to fall again, but they didn't. Why? Law of supply and demand. So what does this tell us uh, moving into the future? What we, what we know is that when CAR, when the CAR economists and NAR, National Association of Realtor, California Association of Realtor Economists, look at a market emerging uh, or declining, they tend to be conservative. They want to get the numbers in a safe zone. So a little high, a little low, they, they want to be in a safe zone. They, they don't want to miss the numbers on the negative side. So uh, that being said, if we take a look at where our projections are going and what we're expecting, we're expecting a couple things. We're expecting interest rates to uh, drop just a little bit, uh, maybe down to 6.1 uh, sometime this year. That's what they're projecting. So if they miss, maybe they'll go a little bit lower. Fingers crossed. Um, and we're expecting with that, a few more sellers will come into market uh, because of the opportunity to maybe not get like for like a 3% mortgage for a 3% mortgage, but to get a 5% a, a or a 6% mortgage for that 3% uh, mortgage, maybe that's going to be a little more palatable. We'll see people start to make those life changes that they've been putting off. Um, and uh, that renewed activity should see some substantial competition and growth um, go uh, here in uh, California in general and Southern California specifically. If you do the numbers, Southern California did roughly about uh, just under two thirds of the of the volume for the state. So we've had a decent market here 
um, even though our numbers have been historically low and we expect to continue to drive the market. So all that being said, I guess what I'm telling you is that we're kind of in a pattern of a new normal um, and we're going to see uh, prices bob up and down a little bit. We're going to see activity um, remain probably close to historic low levels, but we are projecting about a 13% increase CAR uh, projecting that. And if, uh, if again, that number is conservative, could be a good year for all of us. For buyers, uh, should be more for you to choose from. From sellers, should be more offers coming your way. Uh, for those of us in the industry, realtors, lenders, escrow, you get it. Um, should be a few more transactions uh, for us to negotiate. And uh, uh, all that being said, I'll end it with this. We'll see you in escrow. I'm Frank Spencer. I'm Mr. Chatsworth, and I'm here to help.